wants to draw near to you, seek nearness to you through the Prophet wasallam. There's something missing here, but I will explain later. Don't, don't stop listening. We used to seek nearness to you through the Prophet wasallam, and now we are seeking nearness to you through the uncle of the Prophet wasallam. You get it? And you used to give us rain when we sought through the Prophet wasallam. so give us rain now. So give us rain now. Then Anas said, Fayusqawn, and so they used to be given rain. Whenever they would do this, Allah will give them rain. In one of the narrations, Umar used to say, Ya Abbas, O Abbas, Qum, get up, Fad'ullah, and ask, beg Allah, invoke Allah. In another narration, Qum fastasqi, get up and seek rain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Now, the, the, the Sufis, they say, and the grave worshippers, and those who are inclined towards this issue, with the minority of the people of the Sunnah who misunderstood this topic and had an, an off position, they say, look, they were asking Allah. The hadith says, we used to natawassalu ilayk bi nabiyina. We used to seek nearness to you through our Prophet, and you would give us rain. Now we are seeking, you know, natawassalu ilayk bi ammi nabiyina. So then they must be asking Allah, through the honor, the virtue, the status of the Prophet Muhammad You see the justification? This is how they justify it. That this is what it means. Uh, the Sufis claim that this is, you know, how one should make seek rain or how should one ask Allah for things through the Prophet Muhammad So they go to his grave and they do that. Question. Was the Prophet dead or alive during this hadith? He was dead. Some people don't like to hear the word dead, right? If you, have, if you have been brought up in an environment where they tell you that the Prophet ﷺ is alive, when you hear dead, like, oh, you know, don't offend, don't offend us. Akhi, Allah told them in the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتٌ You will die. He's dead, alayhi salatu salam. He's dead, alayhi salatu salam. And that doesn't degrade his status in our sight, nor does that defame him, alayhi salatu salam. He remains the messenger of Allah, the one who we love and cherish and follow in the, in the best way we can. But he's dead, alayhi salatu salam. He, was, he had passed away. If seeking rain or anything else through the dead was allowed, why did not Umar go to the Prophet salam in his grave and say, Oh, messenger of Allah, give us rain. Ask Allah to give us rain. Why would they go to the Abbas? That's the first refutation. That's the first refutation. They claim that it's permissible to seek through the dead. Here's the Sahaba. Now, could at any time in, in this life, could, could Al Abbas ever be better than the Messenger of Allah? Could he ever be better than him? So then would they leave the Prophet ﷺ and go to the Abbas even though the Prophet is better? No. They wouldn't have done so unless they had known that it is not permissible to go to the, dead, uh, the grave of a dead man and ask him anything. You see how beautiful that is? That's the first refutation which we have for them. Secondly, the status of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not end with his death. His, his jah with Allah, his honor with Allah is eternal. In Jannah, he will remain the most honorable of all. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu whether he's dead or alive, it does not affect his status with Allah. So then why would they go to Al-Abbas if the jah of the Prophet Sallallahu is superior to that of Al-Abbas? If they, if they, because they knew that this was, this was not permissible. The third point. Al-Abbas actually said, Al-Abbas himself said in the dua which was narrated in the other narrations. Allahumma innahu la yanzilu bala'un illa bidham wa la yukshafu illa bitawbah until the end of the hadith. O oh Allah, no calamity befalls us except because of our sin. And it is never removed unless we repent from the sin. So then he begged Allah and he said, we turn to you in repentance and they were granted rain. If they were only asking through the jah of the Prophet ﷺ, what is the point of Al-Abbas making dua? If they said, oh Allah, we ask you through the Messenger of Allah. Or let's say they were doing tawassul through Al-Abbas. If Umar said, oh Allah, we are asking you through Al-Abbas. Then why would the Abbas make dua? It would be, it would be futile. It will be of no point. There will be no point in making dua when the tawassul had already been done. But they understood that tawassul did not mean what the innovators define it as today. They understood that tawassul was actually seeking nearness to Allah through the dua of the righteous man.
So look at the understanding of the Sahaba. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, is dead in the grave. We don't go do tawassul through him. Al Abbas is alive, his uncle, who was a righteous man. Still, through the living, we don't do tawassul to him except by asking him to make dua. Qum fad'u. Umar told him, get up and make dua. He made dua, Allah blessed him with rain. If the concept of tawassul was valid according to the grave worshippers and the Sufis, there would be no need for the person to make dua. It would have been automatically granted as soon as they asked through the jah of this person whom they claim Allah Azza wa Jal will give him because of him. Now, so what does that explain? That explains that there's something emitted in the text. Something emitted in the text which we must understand in the light of other narrations and in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. It's one of two options. Either they used to say, Allahumma inna kunna natawassalu ilayk bijahi nabiyyik. We used to seek Ninas you through the status of your Prophet so you would give us rain and now we are seeking tawassul, we are seeking Ninas to you through the jah, the status of Al-Abbas. So give us rain or the other possibility in the hidden, the emitted words is, Oh Allah, we used to seek nearness to you through the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu and now we are seeking nearness to you through the dua of his uncle Al-Abbas. It's one of these two possibilities, there's no third. And this is where we differ with the people of innovation. We say that the, the, the hidden, the emitted words are dua and not the status of the person. Why? Let me reinforce this in a number of ways. First of all, the hadith says, Kana. Look at the hadith. Kana ida qahatu. In the Arabic language, Kana means when. One of the meanings is when. For example, I say, when Ramadan comes, we fast. What does that mean? That every time, whenever Ramadan comes, we fast. It is not a single incident. It's something that is repeated on and on. Every time Ramadan comes, we fast. When Ramadan comes, we fast. Clear? The hadith says, Kana. They're used to, whenever, whenever they would have drought, they would ask, whenever they had drought, they would ask Al-Abbas to make dua. This explains the idea uh, hold on, would gather and beg Allah through the status of the Prophet or would they go to him and ask him for dua? Now, how did they do it at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu You remember the hadith in Jumu'ah? When they wanted rain, what did they do? They went to the Prophet and said what? Make dua for Allah Azza wa Jal to give us rain. That means, when during his life, during his life we used to do tawassul ilayk. Now we're trying to prove that what is the missing word is dua. How did they make tawassul to Allah? Through the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu And now we are doing it through the Abbas. So how is it going to be done? Through the dua of Al-Abbas. Because during his life, the Prophet Sallallahu they did it through his what? His dua. Subhanallah al -Azim. Beautiful explanation of the ulama, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and others. Of course, they don't like Ibn Taymiyyah at all. Furthermore, other narrations explain and prove this. We have the hadith of Sulaim Ibn Amir. And it was narrated by Ibn Asakir with an authentic chain of narration. He said, Mu'ayyab, Mu'awiyah ibn Sufyan, he, uh, he and the people in Dimashq suffered from a drought. They suffered from a drought. So they went out to pray for Salatul Istisqa. After Mu'awiyah got on the mimbar, he said, Aina? He said, where is Yazid? What's his name? His name is Yazid ibn al-Aswad. Where is Yazid ibn al-Aswad? So Yazid ibn al-Aswad, he was a righteous man. In one 